Hi and welcome back to another episode of Rick's Garage. In this one I will be removing the rest of the suspension components and all of the brake components. So that would be the brake discs, the Brembo calipers, the shock absorbers and the springs obviously, the outer and inner tie rods and also the drive shafts. Uh, it's not intended as um, a tutorial, it's just an overview of what to expect. Uh, if you've already done it, it will look very familiar to you. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm doing the passenger side first and the first thing I do is remove the brake pad wear sensor connection and then keeping the retaining clip in for the brake pipes I just crack off the uh, union which is a 11mm and once you unplug this I've got a spur piece of copper brake pipe which I crushed in the vise with a spur union on the end which I'll plug the brake line with just to stop it seeping out all over the garage just tighten it up And then before I do anything else, I protect the ends of the connections with some fingers off a rubber glove zip tied on. Just a good idea to keep out all the uh, crap. Okay, so now we can remove the uh, Brembo calipers. The caliper bolts are 19 millimeters. And then I remove the uh, track rod end, which is a 17mm nut, and then I just whack it out with a hammer. Obviously it doesn't matter because I'm replacing all this stuff. Next is to remove the brake disc retaining bolt, whatever you want to call it. Those pins are 12mm. And then I remove the ABS sensor, which is a 5mm Allen bit, which you always tap in with a hammer just to make sure it's seated properly, because these do round off very easily, which you'll find out on the other side. Thankfully this one came out really easily. Just unplug the cable from the shock absorber. And then I want to remove the hub nut, but before I do that I just lift up these little tangs. The hub nuts proved to be a little bit too much for my uh, smaller impact to handle. I kind of knew it would be to be honest. So um, I brought, brought out what I like to call Big Bertha, <laughs> which is a 240 volt impact. It's uh, overkill for most jobs, but for things like this it's brilliant. Just effortless. Then I just give the uh, drive shaft just a little tap with a hammer. And then it'll pop out quite easily from the back of the carrier. And then the shock absorber bolts. Out next. Those are a 19mm bolt and nut, keeping all those nuts and bolts together. And then before you move the last one, just support the carrier, obviously so it doesn't drop to the floor. And to remove 
the shock absorber itself. You just want to remove the top mount nuts, three of, and those are a 13 millimeter. <laughs> and out it comes, nice and easy, no problems. And lastly, for the passenger side, I just remove the Phillips screws to remove the arch liner. And that's pretty much it. At least for this side. I always forget about one. There's always one. Then once I remove the arch liner, I discovered that there's absolutely, well, pretty much no rust whatsoever. None under the strut tower, which I was really pleased about. A little bit of surface, that's it really. It has turned out to be a really good, solid car, this. I've, I've been so chuffed with it up to now. Okay, so exactly the same onto the driver's side. Just removing the uh, the brake pipe now and plugging it. Unplugging the brake wear sensor again and I do cover those up, same as the other side. Onto the caliper again, 19 millimeters. All this is just a bit of a recap, really. Track rod end, 17 millimeters. The impact wrench for stuff like this just comes into its own, it's brilliant. A good old whack it needed to remove this side. Everything on this side was much harder and more stubborn to unbolt than the other side. Twelve millimeter pins to remove the brake disc. Now this side turned out to be a right royal pain in the ass. I knocked the Allen bolt in as always, and then it just rounded off. It was absolutely stuck solid in there. Obviously there's lots of uh, options and things to resort to to remove these. My first one was to knock a T40 Torx bit into it and then luckily for me it just comes straight out. No issues whatsoever really. The ABS sensor itself was rammed in there solid as well. It took some wiggling and jiggling to get that out. The only way I could get it really is to uh, carefully grip it with some mole grips and lever it up with a screwdriver but it came out with a bit of persuasion. Big Bertha again to remove the hub nuts. And again those are 36mm. And the shock absorber to the carrier Nuts on bolts, 19 millimeters again. These ones were a little bit seized in, but just knocked them out with a screwdriver. Wasn't an issue. And before anyone mentions or thinks, yes, I do pull a lot of funny faces when I'm working. <laughs> I'm aware of it. I'm aware. Okay, the top mount nuts, 13mm again. Obviously, you don't take the last one all the way out until you've got hold of the shock absorber. Goes without saying... And last but not, not least, the uh, screws. 
So we remove the under arches. And again, I was really pleased to discover that there's next to no rust, very little, none really. Certainly nothing to worry about. Plenty of oil, a few oil leaks under there though. Um, it was very wet around the sump, maybe a sump gasket or I know I had an oil leak coming from the rear bank rocky gasket, which I did last year. Should all clean up really nice. And there's the uh, dreaded oil cooler. Okay, now the drive shafts. Those are a eight millimeter Allen bolt and seventeen millimeter nuts. Now I did only plan to remove these drive shafts from the flange, um, or input shaft if you like, whatever you want to call it. I plan to leave that in the diff, but halfway through the job, I did discover that my uh, drive shaft seals or diff seals were weeping. So in the end, I decided to uh, drop the oil and remove those. But otherwise, if you're removing, you could remove the whole lot together. You don't necessarily need to undo this like I'm doing here. You can just pull the whole lot out together. Obviously, most people know that, but some people won't. And the drain plug is a 10 millimeter Allen. Careful you don't drop the plug in the oil. We've all done it at some point. There's nothing like fishing for your drain plug in the oil. Okay, to uh, take out the driver side drive shaft. Firstly, you need to remove these 10 millimeter bolts three of you don't need to remove them completely just so they're out from the other side if you get me and you can just pull the drive shaft out from the diff all the way nice and easy that pulls out really easy to be honest at least mine did now when you're taking this flange out you don't need to whack it obviously you could do some damage just some very light little taps and mine come out very easily you don't want to be levering it or whacking it. Okay, time to remove the uh, track rods. And I'm removing mine from the inner track rod, straight from the ball joint attached to the steering rack. Just remove the spring clips. Slide the uh, gator down, and then you need to remove the tangs. from the back of there for want of a better word you won't be able to unscrew them out until you remove those tangs and it's got to be said that these were an absolute royal pain in the ass they were really really tight but I managed to get them off with some mole grips in the end with a lot of swearing just be careful you don't put any stress on those power steering pipes and there we are Job done, for now at least. So there you go, job done, easy peasy right? Yeah, it is, it's, it's straightforward. Uh, I had uh, no issues at all really, just a couple of minor things. Um, most of my issues were on the driver's side. I'm guessing none of that had been undone or replaced in the past before. Um, everything on that side was a little bit of, uh, you know, took a little bit of persuasion. Uh, one issue was the allen bolt rounded off to the centre inside the hub. Uh, just knocked an old Torx bit into it instead. Uh, it came straight out, no problems. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that the inner tie rod um, knuckle um, holding on to the steering rack, they were a bit of a swine to undo. They were very tight, but got there in the end. Um, so yeah, 
really straightforward job. Um, however, which way you want to do it, however, which way around you want to unbolt things, I don't think there's any right or wrong way uh, as long as you get it all off. Uh, I nearly said get it all off in one piece, but you know, that's not the aim here, is it? <laughs> but yeah, if you uh, found this video useful uh, and you liked what you saw, then please like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And I shall see you in the next video.